Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you some uh, gel printing that I was doing in an attempt to make some monochromatic uh, gel prints for a specific project on cardstock. And I re recently received a box from DecoArt Company and they provided me with some DecoArt Traditions paints which came in a tube. And I usually use tube paint for the gel, the gel plate. So I wasn't paying much attention to which paint it was. It was in a tube. It seemed like it was tube paint to me. <laughs> and so I started to work on some monochromatic prints. And I have a project for these, which will be coming up soon, if not, uh, if not tomorrow, probably tomorrow, maybe. Um, on the live, I wanted I wanted to do something with these prints. So what does monochromatic mean? Monochromatic means using one color. And generally when I gel print, I like to do use lots of colors. Sometimes I use colors that are, you know, coordinating with each other, ne next to each other on the color wheel. But a lot of times I just use all kinds of colors. I like to use black and then then take it out of take the black out of the stencil and fill it in with bright colors. You know, I like all that stuff, but what I needed was prints that would be basically one color. So the way that I would do that, the way that I wanted to try doing that, was to use a single color, which they the traditions paints that were sent to me are yellow, blue, and red, and then to try to mix a neutral with it. So the white, they sent me an opaque white, they didn't send me a black. Um, generally I would mix the color together, mix some white in, it would make a lighter color, mix some black in, it would make a darker color. Those are called shades and tints. Uh, mix in maybe, maybe a similar color that's close to it on the wheel and get a, a visually textural print using the same color. So on the first one I used the red paint and then I mixed in some of the white, the opaque white traditions paint. And it made kind of a grayish pink. And that was fine. It turned out okay. It was definitely monochromatic. Then I decided to do the yellow and there was a umber, uh, a raw umber paint, which is a yellowish color. And so I decided to use the regular yellow with the umber yellow and some white to try to make a monochromatic print. So as I was doing this, um, trying out these paints, I realized that I already have some of these paints. It's j the only thing that has changed is that they put them in a tube, but they are the same. They are the same as the ones that I have in the little bottles. And I received those when we were in uh, when I went to the art retreat in South Carolina, we got some paint. Somebody received some paint from Deco Art, and we all got a little set of these traditions paints in a little sampler set. And so these are not new paints. They're not different paints. They are the Deco Art traditions paints. So what is the Deco Art traditions paint? Well, I look at a, I'll, I looked it up, and I will read it to you. Deco Art Traditions Artist Acrylic is a new generation resin-based medium-bodied acrylic that can perform as an acrylic, a watercolor, or an oil paint. Deco Art Traditions paints utilize the highest quality, light fast, pure pigments available today. This state-of-the-art paint line is ideal for many surfaces including wood, canvas, metal, leather, ceramic, bisque, paper mache, plaster, or drywall. Well, that sounds pretty good, but one thing that they're maybe not all that great for, <laughs> they're okay, but uh, not not as good for gel, gel pl plate printing in my case. Remember, I live in the desert. It's dry here. And what I was finding as I was using these DecoArt Traditions paints, that they are drying too fast for me. So you will see as I'm going along trying to make these monochromatic prints, that in some cases the paint dries on the plate too fast and I can't pull it up with the first print. So I end up getting white splotches. And 
I know this happens. This happens to me with craft paint. This happens to me with Dilutions acrylic paint. Um, some paints are just uh, formulated in a way that dries quickly in the desert air. It's probably not a problem if you if it's humid. But um, what confused me and what why I didn't realize what was going on at first is that they came in a tube, and all the tube paints that I've had in the past have worked great on the gel plate. That's why I got out the gel plate when I saw the tubes, you know, it was like, it was like that. So that being said, they have, the DecoArt has another tube paint um, line and they're called the premium paints. And I do have a couple of those. I didn't blend, I didn't bring them in in this video because I'm just doing the traditions paints on this video, but, um, I think that they're different formulations. So what I'm going to do, and they also sent me some, by the way, some of their mediums, like um, a, an extender and a blending uh, glazing medium and some gesso. So I'm gonna do a different video some other day uh, with these paints, doing them not on the gel plate, but in, in the regular way. So, as I was mixing and blending, you know, I got a, a pretty pure looking red, yellow, and blue. And let's talk again about um, color theory. If you have red, yellow, and blue, you should be able to make every color, right? That's what they tell you in kindergarten. Well, what I discovered about the opaque white in this particular line is that it grays everything out. So that leads me to believe because it says opaque white that it has a lot of filler in it because if when I mixed it with the the uh, blue it turned gray and that's a really brilliant blue ultramarine the white turned it gray. When I mixed the um, let's see what color did I mix. I mixed the yellow and the blue trying to make a green. What I got was olive green uh, when I mixed the red and the yellow together, I got just uh, kind of a brownish orange. So my whole theory of mixing them together to make some other colors didn't really work out very well. And that that all goes back to which color is it? It might look blue, but it might not be as blue and then you start getting, you know, grayed out or browned out colors. So I think that what I ended up with for my project will be great. And I did end up with some interesting prints. All these stencils are from Stencil Girl. And I wanted ones that looked, that had uh, shapes, like very distinctive shapes, like either rectangles or circles or something like that that, um, the, sh the shapes. Here's when I was trying to mix orange and I mixed red and yellow and then I added in a little bit of the the umber trying to get it to be more of a warm orange color and it's a warm orange color. It's kind of brown. I don't know. My color theory was bad today. <laughs> so Anyway, these are my monochromatic prints. Some of them I printed on the six by six plate because you know I work on two plates at the same time. I printed those on regular text weight paper and then the larger prints, most of them went on cardstock. And those will be the ones that I'll be using in the project. And this is a smooth white cardstock uh, Bristol, um, what's it called, solar white? Solar white, I think, yeah. So it's it's not the glossy, it's the uh, just a smooth white cardstock. I need a little bit heavier paper for what I'm going to do. So eventually, just to prove myself right, I get out the rest of my DecoArt Traditions paints, which came in a little one ounce tube, and you you could see it right there. This is exactly where I did it. I took the same color out from the little bottle and the tube and I put them both on the plate and they're exactly the same. So the only difference between the tube paints is that you get two and a half ounces in a tube instead of a little tiny bottle. Um, 
in the sampler kit. What I had was the sampler kit, which had, I don't know, 12 colors or nine colors or something in it. So then I start playing with those um, and br mixing them in with the rest of my uh, colors. So there I just mixed the opaque white with the ultramarine blue. And look at the color that came out. You would think it would be a sky blue or something, but it's not. It's a gray, almost gray. I'm sorry about my camera shaking, by the way. And there's the, uh, what is it? Burnt sienna? Raw sienna? Anyway, the brown color which works really well with this blue and gray combination and makes some really interesting prints. But they're not blue. <laughs> I mean, they are blue, but they're not the blue that came out of the tube at all. That color just doesn't really even show up on these. And that's where the paint dried too much on the plate and I couldn't pull it all up. Um, I think that has to do with it being resin based. They said it was, they said it's resin based paint, but apparently you can mix water with it and make it a really nice watercolor. You can apparently mix an oil medium with it. It's what it said on their website. So I know you guys like to watch gel printing. I'm not sure that I am teaching very much in this, uh, particular video it's mostly just me trying to get some prints that I that I want to use that aren't crazy colorful ones but more like all one tone one color not one tone multiple tones of one color now that that was some of the paint um, it's thalo green thalo green blue or thalo blue green that I didn't have in the tube, I just had it in the bottle. But it, it's kind of a teal color, I like it. It's probably one of my favorite traditional colors. I don't know what thalo is. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what naphthol is either. Naphthol red is one of the colors. And then I had naphthol red in the small bottle and also naphthol red light which I think you will see coming up. I think it's still past this point. And naphthol red light is orange. When I gel pl uh, print on my desk now, I've tied down my camera in a way that when I wiggle the table, the whole camera wiggles and I need to do something about that. I need to figure out how to um, change my setup and build something else because my camera was drooping. Again, I got a lot of white on that one. That bugs me. That's what I don't like about craft paint in Arizona on my gel plate. That's exactly what happens. It dries too quickly and it doesn't come up as a clean print. It drives me nuts. <laughs> That's why I don't use craft paint, even though it's really inexpensive. Those turned out pretty cool, though. Um, when I filled in the space with the brown color, it, I think it looks pretty neat. So back to red, this is when I was, I think, messing around with naphtha red light, which is a different color than naphtha red. It's orange. <laughs> so confusing, isn't it? Wow, I hope you guys don't go crazy with all this camera shaking. Ah, it's really bugging me as I'm watching this. To do the voiceover, I'm like, stop shaking the camera. But it is what it is. I need, I wished I had someone around that could build me something better. Um, yeah, I know what I want, but it's going to have to be built 
and that means that I'm going to have to build it, which I don't really have the necessary tools that I need to do it, so it's going to be a project. So this one, it still looks pretty monochromatic, but I did mix in some yellow. In a couple of these, I mixed in a color that was near on the color wheel instead of just mixing in the black or white uh, to make tints and shades. So then I decided I needed more blue, blue ones. And so I came back and printed a few blue ones with um, a new stencil. And I also got out some tissue paper. And these tissue paper ones, some of the things that I did with the tissue paper are going to be really useful for being blenders on my collages. Not so much that one, but, um, you know, I usually use deli paper. But sometimes deli paper isn't as translucent as I would like it to be. You see how I put that white on there and it just completely grayed that color. Just grayed it. It's weird. The opaque white is not titanium white. I'll tell you that. So that one's pretty blue though. That stayed pretty blue. Then I decided I would do the black background with some blue because black is a neutral and I hadn't done that with any of the others. So I hope that you're enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Um, leave me a comment or question below. Uh, of course, like I always say, subscribe, turn on your notification bells if you'd like to know when a new video is coming. Um, those things all help me out. Also, you can pin this on Pinterest if you have a gel printing board for yourself. You can pin this and that helps as well. And also, if this is your last video for today, please click over to someone who has multi-million subscribers so that my <laughs> video doesn't get punished for you leaving YouTube. This is the social media site. That's also helpful. I'm not sure if I like the back or the uh, or the front of this this one. The gray the grays and blues on the back's pretty cool. The front's pretty cool too. And I ended up getting a ghost out of that by putting on some more blue. So that one turned out pretty cool too. It's interesting that I have a six by six and a 9 by 11 stencil that are so similar to each other. <laughs> that is weird, isn't it? Does that mean I like that stencil? Yes, yes, it means I like that stencil. I love that stencil. I've had the 6 by 6 for a while, and apparently I needed a 9 by 12 as well, which is kind of silly, but still awesome. So this tissue paper bit right here is going to be great, a great blender. i just picking up some of that paint through the stencil in the black. It's going to be really, really cool for my collages. Okay, so this video is winding down. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>